start in just a minute here. Okay. Good morning again. Let me see. Um, Alice is in front of her computer. Can you give me a signal if the audio is working? All right, great. Good, good. Okay, so I've spot that my video so that it'll be the main video that you're seeing during the practice. And I'm going to ask you to take a comfortable seat and I'm going to come into view here for you also. So whatever your comfortable seat is for meditation, please come into that now. And thanks so much for being here with us. This is so important that we keep our resilience high that we we continue we are i've been saying this in class we are yogi warriors and the stamina the fortitude the courage is just so necessary so for those of you who are just signing on welcome to you also it's helpful if you might your microphone mute your microphone <laughs> i do have a brain injury so you're going to get a little bit of that from time to time so please mute your microphone and 
Take a comfortable seat to start in meditation. And you can rest your hands in your lap and you're welcome to close your eyes. And let's imagine that you have several antennas that have been already involved in the world today. That which you see, that which you hear, maybe that which you've smelled or tasted. As well, the antennas that go out to your relationships, both beyond the reach of your own home, into your neighborhood, even the antenna that goes to larger news, local news. And let's take those antenna and turn them inward so that this practice time is to really renew you. Sometimes it's misunderstood that the practice of yoga seems to be a self-centered practice, a practice just for ourselves. But for those of us who are here and who've been practicing in this community for a while, you know that the time that we spend on the mat and on the cushion is to help renew, replenish, recalibrate, so that we can then be of service. We can then be in relationship in more meaningful and wise ways. We aren't removing ourselves from the world as a longstanding uh, value. We are temporarily having a retreat to the yoga mat, to the practice itself. So let your antenna turn inwardly. You can even imagine as the antenna turn in that you're remembering and revitalizing the organs of your body, your heart, your liver, your spleen, your gallbladder, your pancreas. Allow the kidneys and adrenals to be included in this intentional nourishment. The stomach, small intestine, large intestine. The bladder, the organs of procreation, elimination. So imagine that as you turn your antenna inward right now for renewal, or replenishment, what you're cultivating inside is an internal ecology of appreciation, remembrance, and even gratitude that these organs are doing their best to take care of you right now. Under a considerable amount of stress, we're giving appreciation, all the organs in the torso, and then the regions of the brain that you know are working so hard. So your reptilian brain, also called your lizard brain, responsible for basic housekeeping chores and to anticipate that you're safe enough. The middle brain, which does include your amygdala, your kind of smoke detector in your mind, also includes your hippocampus, your memory making field. Let them also know this is a time for replenishment and for renewal. And then the, the centers for proprioception, interoception, and the centers for compassion and empathy. So tuning into your insula, your anterior cingulate, and the centers of the brain that give you the dorsal lateral view where you sense every other and you're able to come in right now to care for yourself. And with that intention, allow your breath to reflect the intention for this nourishment. So every one of your organs will get a message from the breath, like a quick chat message that says, we are here to be replenished. Because it matters to us, but it also matters to those with whom we're in relationship with and everything and everyone we'll have contact with today. Allow your breathing to become smoother, a little bit longer. Also welcome the pauses in your breath cycle. That's a very important part of your rhythm.
I know that a lot of your rhythms have likely been disrupted and you're making new rhythms in life. So come to the rhythm of the breath that you can use for your yoga practice right now. A long, smooth inhale, a gentle pause at the top of the inhale, and a long, toned exhale, taking no particular hurry in that, and a gentle pause at the bottom of your exhale. And then please bring your hands together at your heart. And this morning we're going to sing the Saha Nava Vatu chant. And the word Saha means together. So I want you to think of it as together we are here practicing, but also together with all the resources within you. In this morning's practice, all the organs in the body, all the brain centers together, we are practicing. May this practice protect and nourish. May it give us strength for what lies ahead. May this practice help us to overcome darkness, to remember that which is luminous. And may we not fall into animosity, impatience, or hatred with ourselves, with our bodies, with each other. We can sing together, please. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Unaktu Saviryam Karavavai Tejas Vinavari Tamastu of the torso and give an inward bow to all the functions of the brain taking care of you right now. And then please release your hands and quietly open your eyes. And I'm going to ask you to come up to standing on your yoga mat, taking a wide stance facing the long side of your yoga mat. When you take a wide stance, do it about the length of one of your legs. So my stance will be shorter than those of you who are taller than I am. And <clears throat> sweep the arms wide as you inhale like this. And then exhale, join your palms together at your heart. The inhale, sweep the hands down, wide and up. And use this action to make the breath a little more spacious. Exhale, bring your hands down to your heart, kind of installing a sense of vitality and purpose right there. Again, inhale, sweep your hands down, wide and up. And exhale, bring your hands down to your heart, bringing in a sense of vitality and purpose. And one more time, energize your legs as you inhale, take the arms wide and up. And this time, exhale, bring your hands down to your heart and bow forward and come into the pose called Prasarata Padottanasana. 
And whatever flexibility you have for the pose is completely yours and welcome. You can place your hands on the floor. You can place your hands on the blocks. You could place your hands on the seat of a chair if that was more reachable for you right now. Whatever choice you've made, I'm gonna ask you to do a little bit of a sighing breath practice. So what you're gonna do on the inhale is you let the breath come in through the nose to the low belly, kind of fill up like you're filling up a balloon. And then on your exhale, I'm gonna ask you to sigh with the throat open. And sometimes the sigh will begin with sound and then it will go to silence and has like a whispering quality. Let's do that about five times. So in your forward bend, your torso is slightly inverted. For some of you, it's almost completely inverted because of your flexibility. So inhale through the nose, in your own timing, of course, and then exhale like a sigh. So if the first part of your sigh has a sound, and then it goes a bit to silence, you could make the lips into a straw shape so that the silent part of your sigh is as if you're blowing out through a straw. Let's do this twice more. So inhale through the nose. And then follow your sigh. Might begin with sound. The sound decrescendos, the breath can continue. And you make the lips like a straw. So the end of the exhale has this lovely tone in the low belly. And here's the last one, please. And follow your exhale pace, unique to you, of course. And then please walk your hands back up towards your hips and rise up to standing. When you come up, turn your heels in and turn your toes out. Okay, and then bend your knees and come down one of my favorite warm-ups is this jazz dance warm-up pose. Yesterday we were doing it as a moving practice left to right. Right now we're going to do it as a breathing practice. So press out with both hands against your knees. Widen the upper inner thighs towards your knees. And then you can have the head gently bowed towards the floor so your gaze is down. Remember that your antennas are inward even though you're listening to me. Your antennas should be on the inside. Okay, let's inhale through the nose. And this time we're going to exhale like a straw. Towards the end of a straw exhale, the belly should feel very deeply toned. You're going to release that tone gently and welcome the very next inhale. Now, each time that you exhale through a straw, we'll do it about five times, pace the length of your exhale to be kind of consistently moving out, not rushing in the beginning and then puttering at the end, but consistently. I'll do one more with you and we'll do five all together. Remember on these last two, when you allow the inhale to come in, you should not feel like you're gasping for the breath. This is because you're gently but completely toning the low belly at the end of your exhale. Respect the tiny exhale pause. Loosen the low belly slowly to allow the next inhale through your nose. When you complete the last one, then I'd like you to press down into your feet and rise up to standing. Make the feet parallel once more, and now come down again to Prasarata Padottanasana. And this time in Prasarata, walk your hands forward while leaning your hips back. So your pose will have this quality of traction for the spine. I'll do it as a profile in case you have a question about it. So when you walk the fingers forward, please specifically keep your hips leaning back in the plumb line of your heels. Now we're going to try the same straw breath and I want you to be really focused when you get to the end of your exhale, how you transition to silence and then to your inhale pause. Let's inhale through the nose.
Without any sense of grasping, you welcome the inhale to come and let it fill up the torso, including the back of your heart and the back of the organs. So really the entirety of the inner body gets massaged by your inhale. And you so take your time on your exhale according to your body's pace. And the next time you complete an exhale, then enjoy the in-breath. And with that, then walk your hands back towards your feet and rise up to standing. When we come to standing, now we're going to step into the sun salutation. So this is a good time to get your two blocks ready. Some of you know that I prefer this for the sun salutation, particularly because we're going to do some poses where pressing onto the blocks is going to make your experience stronger. Okay, so I'm going to face to the profile view. Let's place the two blocks at the top of your mat. Join your hands together at your heart. And so let's imagine that this first sun salutation is for your, your liver and your spleen. So you're right here in the mid torso giving some gratitude to the liver and the spleen. And sometimes the liver is the organ that we associate with the emotional inclination for frustration and the spleen, the emotional consideration of worry or fear. So to the liver and the spleen, we give this sun salutation. Join your hands together at your heart. And with the intention to nourish, sweep your hands down as you inhale, sweep your arms wide and up. Honor the inhale, pause, and then come down through Anjali Mudra and into your deep forward bend. With this inhale, glide your heart forward and think of the liver and the spleen getting the message of the breath. Exhale, step back with your left foot. Inhale, rise up to your crescent lunge pose. Lift the back of your waist to make space for all of the organs. And then exhale, make a wide circle of the arms and go slowly down to airplane pose. Lightly touch the two blocks. Inhale, your left foot forward, bring your heart forward. And then exhale, step your right foot back. Inhale to rise, crescent lunge. Imagine the liver and the spleen floating up a little bit in the space you're making in the belly. And then exhale, wide circle of the arms. Slightly touch the two blocks. Place them aside and inhale backwards to downward dog pose. And in your downward dog pose, since the liver and the spleen are right there under the rib cage, imagine that you inhale to the deep low belly and then the mid belly, and then you come up to smile at the organs near to your floating ribs. So allow for the breath even here to start at the base of the belly, fill out the belly, mid, back, side, and then liver and spleen. When you next inhale, bring yourself forward to plank pose. And press down firmly into both arms and plank pose so that you can keep the back of your waist broad. Imagine now the breath is like the pace of an ocean. And the liver and the spleen are getting the message about the rhythm that you expect them to live by today. So making the breath smooth, imagine the liver and the spleen there in the mid torso under the floating ribs. They are like swimmy buoys floating on the surface of the water. We do not want the water to feel turbulent right now. With your inhale, glide backwards to downward dog pose. And then when you have an exhale breath come, step one foot forward between your hands, then step the other foot forward. This is called Uttanasana. Please bring your blocks back in. And as you inhale, glide your body forward and breathe into the liver and the spleen. And then exhale for a deep bow. You can imagine squeezing the organs as if you were squeezing a sponge you had rinsed. 
Now inhale, rise up, upward hands pose. And then exhale, come down into your heart and your hands. This time we'll be in the same region of the body, but we're gonna think kidneys and adrenals. So these very vital organs. Let's inhale, sweep the hands down, wide and up. Exhale, hands to your heart, your antenna inwards. Inhale, glide your torso forward, lift the back of your waist and your kidneys. Exhale, step your right foot back first this time. Inhale to rise, crescent lunge. Lift the rib cage and the inner body so the organs can feel buoyant because the breath is coming from the base of the pelvis up to support them. And when you exhale, bow forward, giving a little squeeze to these organs as if you were rinsing a sponge and then squeezing it. Touch the blocks, inhale your right foot forward and your torso forward. And then exhale, step your left foot back. Inhale to rise, think of nourishing the inner organs and giving a message to your kidneys. What is the rhythm Exhale to come forward. What is the rhythm you expect the kidneys to live by today? Place the blocks aside. Inhale backwards to downward dog pose. And in this downward dog pose, imagine the breath again, starting at the base of the belly, really near your pelvic floor. And then the low belly, mid belly, the back waist. With the breath, we want enough inhale to come up to smile at the organs, the kidneys, the adrenals. And as you inhale to come forward to plank pose, imagine again these organs are like floaties on the surface of the water. And they are responding to the rhythm of the water, which is the rhythm of your breath. So try to hold your plank pose steady. Your antenna should be inward. Do not think of the activities of the day to come. Leave all conversation aside. With your next inhale, glide backwards into downward facing dog pose. And then with your exhale, step the other foot forward first this time. Whichever that is for you, step the second foot forward. Bring your blocks back in. As you inhale, glide forward, lift and broaden your kidneys, then gaze forward. And exhale to bow towards your legs. Squeezing the organs like squeezing a sponge. Let's now inhale to rise, upward hands pose. And exhale, join your hands together at your heart. Pause for a moment to feel the inner effect in your body and to imagine the rhythm that your organs are receiving from your breath. Is this the rhythm that you want them to live by today? You get to make that choice. You can support that for yourself. Now we're going to go down to the lower organs in the abdomen, let's say stomach small intestine, coiled all the way through, and then the colon. So join your hands together at your heart. We're gonna add a twisting pose this time. With your inhalation, sweep your arms up. Now let's exhale and sit down to chair pose. So in chair pose, it's really helpful to remember that the back of the body should be breathable and broad. I've been teaching yoga for more than 25 years, and I do watch that people compromise the lower back and chair pose consistently, daily. So with your inhale, sense the back hemisphere of the body being broad here before we add a twist to the pose. Okay, then exhale and bring your left arm down to the inside of your left knee. And with your inhale, twist to your right. And let's imagine the Ascending colon and from the stomach to the small intestine, this region on the right hemisphere of your body, you breathe into that with the rhythm you'd like them to best be nourished by. And 
Enjoy another in-breath. And then use your exhale, please, to return to chair pose. Remember, the small of the back should not be compromised here. Inhale. Exhale, bring your right arm down to the inside of your right knee and follow your in-breath to twist to your left. And when you're twisting, keep the knees and the feet symmetrical, your pelvis stable. So the twist really is in the mid-torso, low belly, and the organs. And imagine the rhythm of the breath as a message to the organs in the abdomen, including this time the pathway of the descending colon. And then exhale and return to chair pose. Inhale, push down to rise up, upward hands pose. And now exhale, hands to your heart as you come down to a simple Uttanasana. Inhale, glide forward and listen for any sense of relief the organs have after being soaked and squeezed and soaked and squeezed in the twist. And then please exhale and step backwards with your left foot. Inhale, rise up to your crescent lunge. And now we're gonna exhale, just take the arms out to a T-shape, please. And then scissor, I'm trying not to confuse you. So bring your left arm forward and your right arm back. Okay, this is a little bit like swimming. Right, so inhale, raise both arms. And exhale, scissor the right arm back, left arm forward. Again, inhale, raise both arms. Good, exhale, scissor the right arm back, left arm forward. Notice at the end of this action, there's a slight twist already happening in the belly. Inhale, forward and up. And now exhale, scissor the right arm back as you reach forward, like you're aiming like an arrow. And inhale, rise up. Very good, okay, wonderful. Exhale, come forward, glide your right arm back, aim like an arrow. Inhale, rise up. Excellent, let's do it one more time. Exhale to glide forward, take your right arm back. You're squeezing the right side of the belly. Inhale to rise up. And then exhale, let's descend. You did a great job. Touch the two blocks or the floor, whichever you're using. And inhale your left foot forward. Bring your heart forward. And then step backwards with your right foot. So that was a little squeeze and a little cross crawl pattern for the brain. So inhale, rise up to your crescent lunge. And let's just test drive. So right arm forward, left arm back like this. That's where we're going. All right, great. Inhale, raise both arms. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Feel a little twist at the back of that movement. Inhale, return, arms up. Exhale, glide, right arm forward, left arm back. At the end of the breath, there's a very slight twist right there. Great, inhale. Now we're gonna aim forward. So exhale, bow over your left leg, sweep your left arm back. Inhale to rise. You are squeezing the left side of the belly. Exhale to come forward, make the right leg strong, right arm strong, left heel grounded. Inhale to rise. Yes, great job. Okay, one more time. Last one, inhale to come up like a celebration. And then exhale, arms wide, and let's lightly touch both blocks. Please step your right foot forward. And notice again, if there's any sense of freedom, ease, or space for the belly, exhale to deeply bow towards your legs. Let's inhale, rise all the way up, upward hands pose. And then come down to your heart. And pause to notice the energy you've gotten moving by your actions, your breath, your practice. Imagine all the others on the call right now, their heart rate, their circulation, body temperature, breath rate, 
Everyone has an activation of some kind. And the body intelligence infusing all of us is taking care right now to speak to the organs, the brain, the lymph system, everything. Now we're going to be adding the twist that we were building up to in that practice. So with the inhale, sweep your hands down, acknowledge the belly, raise your arms wide and up. Let's go directly to Uttanasana. Keep your legs stable, please. The inhale, glide forward through your heart. Now step your left foot straight back. Let's make this a stable foundation. Inhale, rise up to your crescent lunge. So on the exhale, I'm going to ask you to imagine almost like you're swimming. You're doing this in the water. And it is a yoga pose. So when you exhale, sweep the right arm back and bring the left arm down to the floor or to your block and make the right arm a full circle into your twist. Now some of you are going to find that your shoulder mobility just got more obvious to you or lack of shoulder mobility. So let's now inhale, take your right arm back and rise up. Left arm's going to come up first because we are scissoring. That's the end breath. Great job. Exhale, reach your right arm full circle. It goes down, back, and up to the twist. And then inhale, right arm and left arm moving to arrive at the top together. Great. Once more. Exhale, left arm down to your block, right hand back, and then up. And last one, inhale. Great, and then exhale. I know that we're heating you right now. Thank you for being here. Inhale, step your left foot forward. And then exhale, take your right foot back. Please inhale, rise up to the crescent lunge. So this is like swimming, really good for the brain. As you exhale, reach forward with your right arm. It's gonna come down to your block. The left arm makes a full circle to your twist. And then inhale, reverse that. Yeah, great job, okay. And then exhale, like swimming, bring the left arm down, full circle, right hand to the block. And then reverse that. You're doing great, thank you. Once more, coming down, full circle with the right arm. And then swimming backwards. Beautiful job, thank you. Exhale the arms wide and lightly touch the two blocks. Inhale, step forward. Exhale for a deep bow to the legs. Let's do one breath like sighing where you get to have sound and then the sound goes to the silent part of the exhale at the end. So deep breath in. And then inhale, sweep your arms wide, rise up to upward hands pose. And bring your hands down to your heart and your mind down to your stomach, small intestine, large intestine. These organs just got um, massaged, mobilized, the pathway of the colon, everything inside. Get really still mentally right now and reassure your gut that the rhythm you want to live by today is not the rhythm of past, future distractions, not swinging from likes to dislikes, not flinching at each sense impression, but to live from a place of inner sanctuary, resilience, renewal. I'm going to ask you to release both hands and you should feel really warm enough that we can do this twist now that further massages all the organs we just mentioned. So liver, spleen, kidneys, adrenals. We have to include the gallbladder and the pancreas and then the stomach and the intestine. So this goes like this. 
Step your right foot forward and bring your left knee down to the floor like you would in Anjani Asana. And I'm going to recommend that you use blocks for this because the reach you have to the floor is going to be stronger than when you press down into the blocks, the upper torso has a little bit of a lift. You start to feel the, the front of your left hip flexors, the front of your left hip and pelvis. And let the breath go deeply down into the left low belly and left hip. That's a part of your tap root right now, so you're going to need that to be strong. And then you're going to place your right hand on your right thigh and swish the belly to the right. You're getting this really low belly twist to the right. Once you've established that, start turning the mid organs to the right and then hook your right elbow or your right armpit. I'm sorry, left elbow or left armpit over your right knee. Join your palms together and further the twist up into the heart and your upper back. And choose a place to twist that actually feels breathable to you. So we started with the hand on the thigh to make that little bit of leverage for the low belly to participate in the twist. Then we had the mid belly. You choose if you want to hook your elbow over your knee. You also can choose if you're going to widen the elbows to make the twist a massage for the heart and the upper back as well. Whatever choices you're making, your body should feel breathable. And if you were to speak in the pose, we should be able to hear you clearly. I'm not asking you to do that right now, just saying these are some ways in which you can sense if you're over efforting. As you next exhale, release to face towards the two blocks. And then press into your right heel and just slowly straighten both legs. So this becomes a forward bend. Let's imagine that the hips being the high point here. Now the organs are getting a little drain upside down. As when you turn the sand hourglass thing upside down. So they got to squeeze in the twist and now the organs are slightly upside down. Take a deep breath into your low belly. Allow for that flushing in the inner body. And then thoughtfully bend your right knee and step your left foot forward. And then your right foot back. And bring your right knee down. On my ass, I'm going to switch so that I can keep seeing you. When you bring your knee down, make sure that your left heel feels grounded because both points on the floor are part of your foundation. Press down into the two blocks and just first allow your right hip flexors to breathe a little bit. And you can sense the rhythm of your breath is like an instant chat, an instant message to the organs. Not just when you're practicing yoga actually, but all the time. Now place your left hand on your left thigh and make a little swish of your low belly, like you can move your belly button or your navel to the left. And even deeper than that, like you can invite the bladder to have a little movement to the left. And then the mid torso, the mid organs. And then hook your right elbow over your left knee. You can choose to bring the palms together. You could choose to widen the elbows. We want the twist to be able to come into all the organs in the torso. And yet to be a breathable experience. Listen for the rhythm of your breath and ask if it is the rhythm you'd might like to communicate to these organs as sort of a baseline rhythm for today. And if you need to make a recalibration to the breath so the rhythm, the message are more harmonious between you and your body, by all means do that. And then as you exhale, slowly release the twist, place your hands back on your blocks, tuck the right toes under, straighten both legs please. And in this forward bend, this variation of Parjvottanasana, let's imagine now the organs 
are a tiny bit inverted. And so you can picture the downward flow for the organs as if you had turned the hourglass upside down and the sand is dropping through one grain of sand at a time. Take about three more breath cycles to really sense that every breath is a message from you to the inner organs. And then please step backwards to your downward dog pose. And let's check and see what downward dog pose feels like. Now, one thing is that downward dog pose is symmetrical. It's also quadruped, so it might feel very stable right now, which can be a beautiful thing. Let your antenna go way inward. This is a pose of homecoming. And imagine the organs now are even a little bit more inverted for some of you because your hips are higher than your head and heart. Whereas in Parsvottanasana, we may have been a little bit less inverted. So that flush is happening again to the organs in the inner body. Beautiful. Then please bring your knees down to the floor and take a block or two or a stack of hands to rest in child's pose so that your head has support. When you come down to this child's pose, let the lower belly be really breathable. You might also notice the breath in child's pose does expand a bit into the sides of the belly and hopefully also into the back of the belly, but it's circumferential. That experience of the circumferential breath is something that when we are practicing, we can forget by distraction. So come back to sensing the circumference of the breath. It's gentle right now, right? You're in child's pose, doesn't need to be vigorous. But try to sense that you can support that. Almost like you're sensing the circumference of life. Larger than your own life. This planet is spherical. Ripples on water go out in circles. The sun radiates out circumferentially. Our hearts are actually capable of circumferential love in all directions. We will feel that more naturally when the body, the organs, and the life are not so distracted. So now please walk your hands back towards your knees and up to kneeling. I'm gonna demonstrate for a few moments because I want to give you a way to practice something. And I think what I'm gonna do is Put my mat on the diagonal. I have two mats here. Maybe next time you see me, I'll have three or four mats here. <laughs> so I want you to be able to see this, and I'm going to use my two blocks. So let me check my visibility. Okay, let's imagine that this is my right leg forward because I think on your screen it looks like my right leg. All right, so I'm going to place these two blocks on the inside of my right leg. So my right foot is behind, you can't see it at the moment. So this is the beginning of a pose we would call triangle pose. But I'm gonna ask us to do it differently than we normally do. So I'm gonna turn my hips to face towards the two blocks and come forward and down. Now both of my hands will end up on the inside of my ankle like this. And I want to prioritize the strength of the bottom arm. So when I press down into my right arm on the fingertips, it's to rotate the pelvis, the right thigh, then the low belly, then the mid belly, the organs, the heart like this. So this triangle pose, I have my right hand to the inside of my foot, not to the back side. So it's in here. And please watch one more moment. When I exhale to come down, I want to be able to reach the left hand back to the block without turning my hips. So this turn that I've made here, I've already checked that the height of my block with my right fingertips on it 
This is a fully free triangle pose. And when I come down, the left arm is able to reach for that block, but I'm not moving my hips to get there. So it's not this where I could easily touch it. But I want you to make the base of the pose very stable. So this turning is gonna happen here in the mid torso. Okay, so let's come down with two blocks to the inside of your right ankle, please. And you can start with the length of the stride and the firmness of your feet established. Then press down into your two blocks and root your tailbone. You can already feel your body prioritizing the movement of your body weight back into your left hip and your left heel. Then lower the left arm so it dangles. Rotate your pelvis, your low belly, mid belly, the organs in the abdomen, your heart, your shoulders, your gaze. Lift your left arm. So very strongly energize your right leg. It's involved here, but the weight should feel like it's really moving from your left hip down into your left heel. Keep that very stable and start bringing your left arm down. Bring your gaze down. Rotate your nose down. Reach from your left upper back towards that block without giving up on your hips. And then rotate your left hip, left low belly. Turn through your spleen on the left side. Rotate your heart. Roll your left shoulder back. Raise your gaze and your left arm. Let's try it again. So you're gonna keep the low hemisphere of the torso and your pelvis stable as you unwind. So the reach of the left arm, you might even feel like, oh, there's your left lower back, mid back, upper back, you're stretching. Once more, press into your foundation. That includes your right fingers and rotate your pelvis, left low belly, left mid belly, the spleen, your heart, your eyes, and your left hand. And now, as we were swimming before, let's take the left arm down, press into your right foot, and raise your right arm up. Great job. Okay, release this side, and let's change to the other side. And for me to show you, I will reverse my position. So you're going to have your blocks on the inside of your left foot this time. And you'll see a different view of my pose. Maybe that'll be educational. So we want to start with the pelvis. We know where we're going. It's called triangle pose. But we're going to turn the pelvis towards what's called Parsvottanasana. And bring your hands down to the inside on those two blocks. And as you press into the block under your left fingertips, energize your left leg and already start moving your pelvis back into the right hip and down into your right outer heel. Firm the outer hip muscles on the right hip. And then start turning the deep low belly, so your pubic bone, the bladder, the organs of procreation. We rotate the mid belly, there's the intestines. And then we rotate the upper belly. Now your liver turns, then your heart, and raise your right arm and also your gaze. So there's your inhale. And let's try it slowly, your own exploration, three times to go down with your antenna deeply inward to your experience. If you truly keep the legs stable in this experience, you'll be accessing the inner body, especially when you're rotating upwards. So the rotation is from the inner body. And if you keep the legs very stable on the descent, you'll be able to stretch into the myofascial planes across the back of your body. Low back, mid low back, right low back, shoulder blade, Please do it one more time. Your body deserves. This is like soaking and squeezing a sponge. And your rhythm has to be yours. So you're giving this inner message to the ecology of your organs.
And you're ready to, you can then let the right arm start to swim to the right as you rise up to standing. And let's make the feet parallel and do one last standing wide leg forward bend. Now the organs might be the most inverted for some of you because even more than um, downward dog pose, some of you will find that you go a little bit deeper into your forward bend. It's not required. Please don't misunderstand me in that regard. But let the, the flushing of the organs allow that medicine. The adrenals are part of our stress response team. The gut is the first word in the phrase, gut brain axis. The messages from the gut go 95% from the gut to the brain very quickly. So the gut is informing the brain about the nature of the moment, the nature of life. The liver tends to house the emotions of frustration irritation, the spleen for fear and worry, the organs of procreation, the sensuality of desire, the wandering sometimes into trouble, sometimes into beauty, but of course, sometimes into trouble. And right now, sense how the organs make up this vital ecology in you, and they are related to your mental health. And then please walk your hands up to your hips, rise up to standing. And in preparation for some seated poses, I'd like you to take a blanket to sit on. A blanket to sit on means as high enough as you need it to be to support your pelvis. It might also mean that you sit on two blankets. That is okay. And let's start in Baddha Konasana, please. Put the soles of your feet together. So good to see you. This is the pitta window of the day, so we're having a little bit of pitta. We heated the body this morning. And I said this yesterday or the day before, perhaps for you it's also happening that the days are running together. So I was saying that just like we melt ghee in the frying pan, in the slightly warm pan, the ghee melts before we add the spices. We also have to melt the residue of stress in the body, and we actually do that with heating. So you have this residue is now mobilized. We want it to be departing as a result of your practice. You don't want to mobilize the residue and then have it stick around. So in Madhakanasana, sit up high on your sitting bones. Please hold your feet or your toes or your cat or your dog, and then come forward slowly. Be thoughtful in Baddha Konasana not to overly round your back, but do allow yourself to have a sense of inwardness. This is a really good time to start pacing your breath so that your inhale and your exhale, they can be equal to each other. And if possible, if it's within your own practice sphere so far, you could make the exhale about two or three counts longer than your inhale. And that will further establish the parasympathetic reset for your body. And if you give yourself the due diligence of actually counting the breath, your antenna will go further inside. You'll have both your left brain, the counting part of the brain, the top of the brain, the counting part, and the right brain, the feeling part of the brain, and the base of the brain, the breathing part. They all work together when you're counting the breath like this. And in the center of that, the amygdala, the hippocampus, the mammalian brain becomes nourished, becomes soothed. So you can say to yourself, for example, 
Breathing in, two, three, four, five, whatever your length is. And then you say to yourself, breathing out, two, three, four, and continuing either for an equal breath or a two counts longer breath. And then please walk yourself back up to your sitting. And as you come upright, bring your knees up to center and stretch your left leg straight out on the floor in front of you. Please bend your right knee up snug to your chest and heart. So that snug means that for some of you, it's gonna be helpful to sit up a little bit higher on a blanket. That's actually the case for me. I don't have flexible ankles. So if I choose to fold my blanket one more time, when I then bring my knee to my chest, I really have the sense that I'm sitting upright in my pelvis. And now my ankle's able to bend a little bit more because my hips are higher. So adjust for yourself and then wrap your left hand around your right shin. If you've sat up higher, you might need a block to make the floor closer behind you. We're gonna to twist to the right. Now I'm gonna ask you to consider in the twist, which you're welcome to proceed into, the depth of the squeeze of the twist will not be as valuable to you if the breath can't continue. So when you're twisting to your right, be very sincere, very dedicated to continuing the pacing of the breath, the counting of the breath. So we count from the neocortex, and we use the left hemisphere of the brain, the, the part of the brain that's good at math and science. We sense the breath, we feel the tone of the breath with the right hemisphere of the brain, the sensing feeling part of the brain. And we also breathe using the reptilian brain, the lizard brain. So in the center of all of that, you have your amygdala and your hippocampus, your mammalian brain, the fear center. So this internal counting practice in pranayama, you're actually giving really deep nourishment to the part of your brain that has likely been a bit on overdrive lately. Now on your next exhale, allow yourself to turn around to come forward and please quietly switch your legs. So you're going to take the right leg straight out. That's my right leg now. Sorry if I confuse some of you, I'm mirroring you this time. And take your right hand across to your left shin. You may need to use a block behind you so the twist is supported by your front arm and by your back arm. So when you're twisting here again, bring with you your capacity for counting the breath, your capacity for stewarding, chaperoning this really beautiful medicinal practice for yourself. And imagine the organs receiving your attention with such graciousness.
And please do one more breath cycle there. And then when you exhale, come around to face forward and take a seat that you might use in meditation. We're going to just pause to reflect, to feel what is happening now. So you can place your hands out over your knees like a pyramid. So this triangle pyramid shape. Close your eyes for a moment. Feel what's happening inside, noticing the distinct difference between this part of your practice and the active part of your practice. So that was Surya. This is called Chandra, the moon part of your practice. You're becoming more reflective. And now please quietly open your eyes. I'm gonna ask you to watch here. So we're gonna do a short breathing practice now that requires lying down. If you have two blocks, you can use the blocks for this. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a blanket and a block in case you have only one blanket and one block, or maybe you're sharing your two blocks with your housemate or your spouse or your child right now. So if you each have a blanket, you're gonna fold it in thirds and fold it more like an accordion, not like a burrito. Okay, and this is going to go on your yoga mat for your upper back. And then you put your block, one block for you, one for your housemate. I can see some of you are having two people in your practice. So you can make the second block on the medium height like this. And then we're going to lie on this blanket so that the shoulder blades go right on it. And your head goes on this block, your head will be higher than your heart, but I'd like the shoulders to be able to cascade down on the back side of the blanket. It's not that you're poking your front ribs up, it's that the blanket supports your shoulder blades are directly on the blanket. So this little roll of the shoulder down should feel like the melting of the ghee in the slightly warmed pan. And you can choose to keep your knees bent. Some of you will appreciate having the legs go straight. And for some of you that might feel like it pulls your lower back a little bit. So please decide. And once you lie down, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And we're going to be practicing that we notice the breath in the area below the belly button. We notice the breath in the area above the belly button to the solar plexus. And then we'll notice the breath in the upper part of the heart. So this is a three region inhale. So quietly pace yourself to sense the inhale to the first third of the belly, the second third of the belly, and the upper third of your torso, arriving at the top of the heart. And then exhale from your pubic bone up towards your belly button. Again, inhale for the first third of the belly, second third of the torso, and the upper third of the heart and the torso. And then exhale from the first third of the belly like a zipper, going from your pubic bone up towards your belly button. And make each portion of the breath there relatively equal. So if the first third of the breath is three counts, the middle third is three counts, the upper third is three counts, you can then pause for three counts, and then exhale for nine counts. And let's try that about three times in silence. I'll let you do one in silence, then I'll repeat my instructions in case you're getting distracted, but you'll stay quietly in your own practice. Make a smooth transition from the exhale, exhale, pause into your inhale. 
And just really consider that you're pacing the breath, moving it through the torso. At the very top of the inhale, it'll feel like your heart is reaching towards your chin. That's appropriate. At the end of your next exhale, please relax your focus on this breath with your eyes, your ears, your mind, and your antenna go inward. Allow the limbs to get really heavy and deeply relaxed. And for the breath to simply be breathing you Allow it to find its own rhythm. Allow the breath to take care of you. And if you start to hear the sounds of digestion turning back on, this is a sign of health. So allow for the symphony of the inner body. And we are going to transition to a supported Shavasana. So I'm going to recommend that you roll to your side. I know that some of you might feel like you could stay there for your Shavasana. And of course, that is an option. It just might be a long time in that particular back bend. Otherwise, you can take the blanket and unfold it like this. And then fold it in half. So when I unfolded that, it's the largest from the storage fold. This is my storage fold. This is Alpha. I'm going to take the long side to the long side, and I'll do that twice. So I have this. And then this blanket goes down the yoga mat like so. You're going to sit in front of the blanket, not on it. When you sit in front of it, then when you lie back, it supports your lumbar curve. And then you can reach to put your block under your blanket, under your head, or this is my favorite thing to do. I curl the blanket part that I have right under my neck. I curl it like an inchworm so that again, the gaze is down toward the heart. And the spine is supported and you can decide, you know, how high or not so high you want your head to be when you make that blanket curl. It is up to you. I do not want your head to tip backwards where your chin pokes up towards the ceiling though, because I'd like this region of the throat to be inward right here. It's called Udana Vayu. And I don't want that to be open in Shavasana because it's like a, a thought generator. So find your comfortable Shavasana, please. And when you come into your Shavasana, let your antenna travel down into the inner abdomen and imagine a sort of the sea of the organs in here and the quietness of the deep sea inside. You might start feeling the, hearing the digestive sound. So when I say the quietness of the sea inside, I mean, just for now, the organs can sense a deep inner tranquility and quietude from you. You have this kind of internal leadership or chaperoning to give to the organs, the gut. You might even say to the organs like a tiny mantra, you could say rest and renew. To rest and renew. So much of daily life 
the organs sense our distraction. And they're just pumping out the chemicals to keep us going. And right now we say, rest and renew. Allow the organs to feel your deep appreciation. These moments are actually profoundly simple, these moments right here, right now. Adio. sense the quiet of your mind and their permission to simply nourish you. surface of thought, to listen for that in you, which isn't thought. Listen for that which is listening, that which grants the deep quiet to be remembered. to know. This is a time to rest and renew. You've made yourself available for them to replenish you. Yourself to go deeper in thought, to rest in the quiet ecology of your body intelligence coming to care for you. You can have this felt sense of 
life remembering you right now as your organs are remembered by you and they give their full hearted care in your direction. Welcome your mind and your limbs to be even heavier with relaxation. The organs will know you are not preoccupied with past or future, not preoccupied with the doing, the striving, not preoccupied with likes and dislikes. And the organs can nourish you more deeply. Now, keeping your awareness inside, I'm going to ask you to have an inquiry with the organs and to ask them, how will they know today that you are doing the most intelligent job of caring for them? How are they going to know this today? Well, you can allow the organs to have their own intuitive response to this question. And then please lightly wiggle your fingers and your toes. And in your own timing, please make your way back up to sitting. Just changing my camera. There we go. So please come back up to sitting. We're going to have a period of meditation together. Let's see if I can get that to work. There we go. All right, great. I know the light's very bright on my face, but you're going to have your eyes closed for meditation, so. Um, please take a comfortable and upright seat. You're welcome to close your eyes. You also could just choose to bring your gaze inward and downward if you prefer that. Rest your hands in your lap. 
You're doing such a beautiful job showing up for yourself. In this meditation, let your attention drop into the dantian, the abdomen, the organs that so need to know. They don't have to just keep up with you. They actually can nourish you. Imagine a happy, harmonious experience inside your body intelligence, not distracted by the happenings of the mind, not hijacked by the senses, and resting in an inner community of healthy organs. Imagine yourself sitting in meditation now with dozens, quite literally dozens of others in real time. And their inner ecology also caring for them. It really matters to each of us as an organism to know that others are tending to their well-being in these profound ways also. Stay in your meditation knowing the value it does have to others. this inner quiet, we learn again to listen. This is a poem by Pablo Neruda said, for once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much. It would be an exotic moment without rush, without engines. We would all be together in a sudden strangeness. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands. Those who prepare green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire, victories with no survivors, would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers in the shade, doing nothing. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. Life is what it is about. I want no truck with death. If we were not so single-minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Now, I'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. This is from Pablo Neruda. Please bring your hands together at your heart. 
Thank you for this shared, dedicated practice and for all of you to be here and for the lives that you will be affecting today as your yoga then flows out beyond you. We'll sing Om Shanti Shanti together three times. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much everyone. It's so nice to be with you. Namaste. Now we have some time, some lovely time for visiting with each other. If you'd like, you can come towards your computer or your camera and you're welcome to turn on your camera.